In one scene, a Nightmare on Elm Street breaks the dream world rules that it so meticulously sets up. Which scene is it? And how does one inconspicuous scene break the rules? Let's you and me jump in the Freddy Mobile and find out. Better dear. Nightmare on Elm Street's premise is nothing short of absolute fucking genius. A fucked face killer enters the dreams of his victims and murders them in their sleep, and the movie sets up the logic of the dream world really well. You fall asleep, you start to dream. Freddy can enter your dreams and attempt to kill you. And if you die in your dreams, then you die for real. The movie continues to play with and bend those rules as a great movie should, but Nightmare bends too hard in some places, hard enough to actually break something. And as an added bonus, there's actually another scene that on the surface seems to break the rules too, but we'll discuss this later. So let's go over our first problem scene. Nancy enters the dream world in an attempt to learn more about what's happening to her and her friends. As a safeguard, she gets Glenn to watch over her and wake her up in case of trouble. Making sense so far, but then she falls asleep, enters the dream world, and then whilst dreaming, calls out to Glenn to see if he's still watching her. Glenn pops out from behind a tree and replies, Yeah, so? And here lies the issue. So the problem here is that the characters can be in one of two states, awake or asleep. And asleep state characters can't interact with awake state characters. When they fall asleep in the real world, they enter a kind of dream world. Up until now, the idea was simple and effective. Well then, if the scene takes place in Nancy's dream world, then how the fuck does Glenn, who's supposedly awake, even hear Nancy, let alone respond? It's not a bad question, Bert. Remember, there's no way that a person in the dream world can talk to anybody that isn't in the same dream. So then Glenn must be asleep and in Nancy's dream, right? Well, that assumption presents even more problems. Okay, let's logic this bitch out. We know that Nancy is asleep and dreaming already, so there's no problems there. With Glenn, however, since we don't see his real world status until the very end of the scene, we have to assume that he's in one of the two states, awake or asleep. Sort of like a Schrodinger's Johnny Depp. Let's tackle the awake scenario first. If Glenn is awake and watching over real world Nancy, that means the Glenn that we see in Nancy's dream world can't be the real Glenn Lance. And if it's not Glenn, then just who the hell is it? Well, it's possible that it could be Nancy's own version of Glenn. For example, when I dream of Faith from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, unfortunately, it's not really her in my dreams, just my own subconscious inserting her in there. And if we look at Nancy, then Glenn is a reassuring and protective figure in her life. So it kind of makes a sense that he would manifest in her dreams when she's feeling scared and vulnerable. The other option is that it's actually Freddy in the form of Glenn, maybe tricking Nancy and giving her false assurance to keep her in the dream world for longer. But unfortunately, the movie presents no real evidence for either theory. Now, let's tackle the asleep scenario, and here's where things get even more interesting. Or confusing as fuck. Because if Glenn is asleep and dreaming, then he could be with Nancy in the dream world. Just like in the Dream Warriors, right? What's the problem? But if his body is asleep, then he can't be watching over Nancy in the real world, making the whole plan deader than poor Tina. And Nancy should realise this when she sees him in her dream. Plus, it still doesn't answer the question of why Nancy called out to him and how he heard and responded in the first place. Remember, the whole plan revolved around Glenn staying awake and watching over Nancy's sleeping body. I just asked you to do one thing. Just stay awake and watch me. Just wake me up if it looked like I was having a bad dream. I feel at this point it's important to know that at the police station, Nancy starts to scream out for Glenn. But this actually makes sense though, because at this point, she actually wants out of the dream. 
and in the real world her screaming would probably manifest as tossing and turning, which would in turn be a signal for Glenn to wake her up. It's the fact that Nancy is calling out, expecting and getting a response that's the problem here. So when Nancy eventually wakes up at the end of the scene, we see that Glenn did indeed fall asleep at some point. So one possible explanation is that Glenn fell asleep soon after Nancy did, he momentarily went into her dream just at the exact moment that she was calling out, and then he went back into his own dream world to dream about whatever 21 year old Johnny Depp's dream about. But it's a little too convenient a solution, as the timing would have to be spot on. And the core issue with the scene can be boiled down to one simple question. Why did Nancy even call out to Glenn in the first place? She didn't want to be woken up at this point, and just how did she expect Glenn to hear and answer back? To answer this, we have to look at the Nightmare on Elm Street series as a whole. Perhaps, just perhaps, Nancy has the power to pull people into her dreams, just like Kristen in The Dream Warriors. It's the explanation that seems to make the most sense. Nancy calls out to Glenn, momentarily pulls him into her dream to communicate with him, with Glenn then exiting the dream, waking up and going back on guard duty. But here, I feel we're making a huge leap based on just what the other movies tell us and not actually what is put forth in this one. Plus, correct me if I'm wrong, but Nancy doesn't seem to have these powers when she returns in part three. She does, however, recognize the power in Kristen, but still, I think it's a bit of a stretch. But the craziest thing is, when she's attacked by Freddy, Nancy returns back to the house and we see a mysterious Glenn asleep in the chair. Who the fuck is this? Remember, Nancy's still dreaming, right? So if it's the dream world version of Glenn, how can he be sleeping too? Either Glenn just loves to fucking fall asleep, or Wes Craven just invented Inception and nobody noticed. So what's the goddamn deal here? Well, to answer that is, <laughs> surprise, more complicated. And to get a fresh perspective on all this, we have to explore the original intended ending for the movie. Now it's been said that Wes Craven actually wanted to end the movie in a positive way, with Nancy overcoming Freddy and seeing her mother and friends again in a dreamlike state, hinting that the whole movie was in fact a bad dream. Whose dream? Well, maybe Craven himself. Or, just to pull a mind scramble on you, how about Jason Voorhees? And if that's the case, then the scene we've been exploring and any other for that matter, can easily be explained away as just something that happened. It doesn't have to have any logic behind it or make any sense. It's just a dream, weird shit happens. But as most of you watching probably know, producer Robert Shea wanted one more jump scare in the movie to set up the possibility of a franchise and the ending was changed to the one that we got. And as interesting and thought-provoking the intended original ending would have been, personally, I think I would have hated it. Because it invalidates everything that happened in the movie. Yes, it's artistic and fancy, but if everything was just a dream, then why should I care? Tina didn't really suffer, and Nancy never overcame her fears. Plus, we'd never get the kick-ass Dream Warriors or any of the other sequels either. I have to believe that everything in A Nightmare on Elm Street actually happened to these characters. So going back to our problem scene, we have to try and make some sort of sense of it for the movie's logic to hold up, and perhaps my own sanity to hold together. So let's go over our theory, shall we? Theory 5 is out because of what we've just gone over. Theory 3 is just too convenient for me and still doesn't answer the question of why Nancy called out. Theory 2 is a no-go for me because there's good evidence against it. A. Freddy was originally targeting Rod and B. We see them all in the same room together later anyway. So I personally think Theory 4 does the best job. 
Nancy momentarily pulled Glenn into her dream. It's the simplest explanation. We know it's at least possible from what we see in the other movies and that that particular power can be passed on to other people. I am however fully aware that it doesn't 100% cover the sleeping Glenn that we see in the dream world. And if we assume that it is indeed the dream world Glenn, then it begs the question, can the dream world versions of characters also sleep and have their own dreams? And that opens up a whole can of worms that even I don't want to get into. Seriously, I've had enough fucking worms for one video. The only explanation that I can think of anyway that explains both versions of Glenn that we see in Nancy's dream is Theory 1, the subconscious version theory. Glenn manifests at the start of her dream when she's feeling scared and vulnerable. He's a protective element in her life after all. And later when Nancy enters her room, she sees the subconscious Glenn again who is asleep this time because she knows that real world Glenn has failed her due to the fact of her not being woken up by him. And it could possibly represent that deep down Nancy's subconscious is telling her in a much broader sense that she's alone in this fight against Kruger. So yeah, that one bit always bugged me because up until that point, the dream world rules were explained and followed really well. It's just a pity to me that this small detail is unnecessarily confusing as it could have just been cut out altogether. Without it, we still see that Rod is in danger, Nancy still has her struggle with Freddy, and we still learn that Glenn likes to fall asleep when he's told not to, the stupid bastard. Now, if you've got any brains left, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there's actually one more scene that on the surface doesn't seem to fit with the movie's rules. And no, it's not the ending. That, my friends, is going to require its own separate video. It's actually the scene with the Freddy Tong phone. It's one of the most memorable scenes of the movie. Well, you know, except for the obvious one. But if Nancy is awake, then how can Freddy force his way into the real world, right? Personally, I always just put this down to Nancy being tired and slipping in and out of sleep. And if we take a quick look at the screenplay, it confirms this. We see that Nancy is experiencing micro dreams, much like the micro naps that they had in the 2010 reboot. Nancy is quickly dipping in and out of the dream world and Freddy takes full advantage. It's a cool idea and I love that the original doesn't literally spell it out for you like the reboot does. The insomniac will begin to experience micro naps. His brain will begin to shut down its functions for several seconds and attempt to recharge itself. This basically means that you're dreaming but you don't know it. <laughs> So now that we've had our heads completely fucked exploring these scenes, there's only one thing left for us to do, and that's to figure out that goddamn ending, son. 